Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me for this lecture. <clears throat> uh, here, my paper is. Uh, about Andalusia and Andalusians and Sicilians, the pioneer of Renaissance. So the title of my paper is about this issue. I have divided the presentation and also my paper in three chapters. Uh, I have an introduction and in second chapter, I am talking about the, the pioneers of the Renaissance, that means Andalusians and uh, Sicilians, and then Cantimere. So in introduction, in introduction first I have uh, had uh, an overview on the uh, on historical issues and the backgrounds, and here I am uh, briefly uh, say that civilization are not are interrelated, so they are not emerged separately from each other. No civilization emerged in isolation. So they are interrelated, and every uh, emerging civilization is under the influence of previous civilization, or they inherited the previous civilizations. So when we just have an overview on the history of Mediterranean uh, basin, in fact, we come to see either these people, the various ethnic, uh, ethnical uh, groups, they were in close contact with each other, either on the sea or shore, on land, always they were in contact with each other, either in the, on the, uh, in the peace environment or maybe in conflict and war atmosphere. But they had these uh, interactions and they, had, uh, they were in touch with each other for quite long time centuries, millenniums, they were in touch with each other, they interact with each other in various fields. Even when we study the conflicts, also we can see that always they are living with each other either in this land or that, that land, either in this home or that home, but they are mixed with each other completely. They conquered the lands of each other. They lived with each other. Sometimes they also took many slaves from each, 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 each other, and they took the slaves home. So they mixed together, extremely they mixed together, more than we think, in fact, through the histories. Today we have uh, the information technology, so we are in touch with each other easily. But even at that time, though they didn't have these technology and these facilities, but when we are studying, we see that during the peace or during the conflict, they had very close contact and connection with each other. So they were under the influence of each other. They they have uh, learned many things, either experiences 
or knowledge, philosophy, thought, they learned from each other and they were under the influence of each other. So when we just look at this uh, slide, and I purposely has put also uh, the dates to see how long the Mediterranean people, they were fighting with each other, they were in conflict with each other, and at the same time, they were either conquering each other's lands. So the conquest is a, is a kind of uh, password <laughs> when we want to introduce this land or this uh, civilization. In fact, the conquest is a kind of password to study this region. Always the territory, the territory of this region are conquered by superpowers, by various people from time to time. So just uh, since I have a slide I don't want to mention in detail. So at the, in the ancient time, when the small civilization we had, they had contact with each other and they had also some conflict with each other. And later, then we have Persian Empire. Then Persian Empire, in fact, united all these small, small civilization under its umbrella. So, all these experience that a small uh, civilization had, they shared with the larger territory and also important uh, empire, the Persian Empire. So the um, Persian Empire, in fact, it was in depth of all these uh, small uh, civilization. And then war between Persian and uh, Macedonia. Then Alexander, Persian conquered Macedonia area. Then Alexander the Great conquered the Persian Empire and also Asia. So you can see that how these people mixed with each other and sometimes they ruled over the territory of each other over the many peoples, many nations. And then the Persian and Macedonian war later changed to Roman and Persian war. 700 years, 700 years of conflict and war between these two superpowers or regional power. So they used to conquer each other territory and also to rule over many nations in the region. And then when the time comes and the Islamic civilization or uh, Muslim came as a power, superpower or regional power in the Mediterranean area, then conflict changed to centuries of conflict between Roman Empire, Byzantine, and Muslims. So you can see that they didn't have technology like us to be in touch with each other, but in fact they were living with each other because they were conquering each other's lands and they were ruling with on over various nations. So this was the a situation that we can see in these uh, studies. And then I came to say that finally, when the Muslim conquered Andalusia, they ruled over there for centuries. 
almost 800 years, almost millennium. So various people were living with various ethnicity in Andalusia. Then all the Muslims from various parts of Middle East, North Africa, Central Asia, with various language, ethnicities, you know, uh, culture, they enter and mixed with the people who lived in Andalusia and lived together for 800 years. So they had many things to exchange. So it was a very unique experience, in fact, in that region to transfer skills, to transfer knowledge, thought, and scientific views. So it was a great change when the European society were living during the uh, Dark Age. It was a great opportunity for uh, Andalusian that Muslim share all these knowledge they have obtained from various people, from various nations, from various uh, civilization, they brought and share with people of Andalusia. And Andalusian also share their uh, thought, their ideology, their background, skills with Muslims. So it was a, a it was a really a unique opportunity in the history of mankind. It was an exchange of civilization. And then after the conquest of uh, Sicily, again in Sicily, for 300 years, three centuries, during the Fatimids and during Normans. During all this period for three centuries, again, the people, it was really strange because I don't think that we, even today we have such a society with various people, multicultural society, multi-religion, multi-language, multi-ethnicity. It is really was a, a strange phenomenon at that time. People from Italy, from Spain, from Germany, from Greece, from Arabs, from Persian, from Turk, from North African, uh, Andalusians, you know, all of them, they mix together in a close society in a small land like uh, Sicily. So again here, all these people shared all their skills, all their talents, all their information, thought, philosophies, everything, under the, especially under the Fatimids, because Fatimids were open to philosophy, to various uh, Muslim thought, Muslim religion, because they, were, they, they themselves were in, uh, in minority, because they were Shia. And, but anyhow, they were also pro-philosophy and pro-theology. It, it was opposite of the case of uh, Eastern part of Muslim world, that means Abbasi, which they were under the influence of Sufism and jurisprudence. And then we have also on the West, Andalusians, under the influence of uh, Maliki uh, jurisprudence, sometimes against, uh, against Sufism, sometimes pro-Sufism, -Suf uh, but all of them who were against philosophy at that time, though we had a great philosopher 
over there like uh, Ibn Abad, Ibn Tufayl, Ibn Rosh. They were great philosophers, but they were in minority. However, I want to say that uh, they had this much anyhow tolerance to tolerate the philosopher because uh, uh, Ibn Tufail and Ibn Rosh for quite long time they were a minister also though sometimes they were that means the rulers were not happy from them. I don't have much time to talk about these issues but anyhow uh, let me uh, move to the second uh, part I have to go faster also normally uh, introduction takes a lot of my time. So, uh, why I am calling the Andalusians and the uh, and, uh, Andalusian and Sicilian as the pioneer of Renaissance? In fact, already I have explained the background why these two places, the multicultural society, multi ethnic, multi language societies of Andalusia and especially Sicily. Why these two places became pioneer, pioneer of Renaissance? Especially I am talking about uh, Sicily because Sicily was almost at the end uh, of the uh, end part of the Middle Age and uh, also for some time, 150 years also ruled uh, by, uh, by Norman regimes. So they also followed uh, same policies. So during the Fatimi time, in fact, they follow, they had, uh, they had religious tolerance and cultural tolerance. So it followed also by Norman. That means same policy followed by Norman. So both of them had a religious and cultural tolerance and they were toler tolerating others. And at the same time, transferring the skills, thought, and uh, scientific views. So they are, the Sicilian especially, are Uh, they, they were uh, they were pioneer of uh, pioneer of Renaissance because practically they were example of tolerance. That means their rule their rule it, it was their rule was an example of tolerance for three hundred years just living with European. This is the European land, it, because the main land is Italy. So, these people followed the same policy of Fatimid, who tolerate various thought, philosophy, and science, and also language and other things. So, for 300 years, they, they had the exchange. And it was a good opportunity for European to translate, to learn directly from this multicultural, multilanguage, and multi-ethnic uh, society, to learn not only science, not only experience, to learn the governance, good governance, how to rule. If you want to know the importance of the tolerance, you compare with the war which we had in Europe. Sometimes, according historian, one half or one third of German population has been killed by their brothers. That means Christians fighting with each other, killing each other. The European war, religious war, is clear. We are talking about that for these periods. And we see one example of tolerance, that means the uh, religious tolerance, cultural tolerance in next door and especially the, during the Roger. Roger II was followed 
the same policy and he was ruling up to uh, German and his mother I think was Ger from Germany so he was the ruler he settled in he like in fact some, sometimes he was ru uh, his capital was in German but since he liked the environment maybe the uh, atmosphere of the Sicily he selected Sicily as his capital but he ruled from the Germany and all Europeans and also Sicily Italy to Palestine at that time so I want to say that you see the uh, territory of this uh, person and he used to follow also Euro, uh, uh, tolerance religious tolerance and policies so this is the one example that I believe they are pioneer of Renaissance and this is the partic one of the most important part particularity of Renaissance because Renaissance was a practice to tolerate other views, to tolerate the philosophical views, the philosophical thinking, to uh, tolerate the human, to honor the human views also along with uh, religious texts. So this was a good experience that uh, normally Sicilian especially shared during the two period, that means Fatimid period and also in the uh, Norman period, they shared with European. So this was one important element that means religious tolerance. Second thing that they shared with the others, uh, it was a philosophical thinking. As we know, the philosophy has flourished in uh, Andalusia. Uh, so during that time, we had a great philosopher like Ibn Bajje, we have Ibn Tufail, and the most famous one is Ibn Rushd. I am just contributing, Ibn Rushd. So Ibn Rushd views, in fact, transferred, and he had a lot of followers in Europe, which I don't want to go in detail, you can see in my paper. So this is also uh, why I am calling uh, uh, Andalusian and also Sicilian as a pioneer in philosophical thinking and uh, the uh, later the philosopher in the in the uh, renaissance time in fact they were the backbone of uh, of renaissance in europe so we cannot deny that one so they have they are in depth of these pioneer these two uh, nations and then i have also mentioned that another Another important features and characteristic of Renaissance is experimental science and experimental method of studies, which again Renaissance is in depth of, uh, uh, especially in depth of uh, Sicilian. And just I here I gave a one example of a project. This project, that means geographical studies and also mapping, geographical mapping, has been carried out by uh, Al Idrisi, and his this project funded by uh, Roger II for 15 years, and according uh, his book, Nuzhatul uh, Mushtaq. In fact, in Nuzhatul Mushtaq, it he shows that they have field studies, they traveled all over the seas for mapping and also writing and uh, giving all the distances and uh, also at the same time with his team he used to have an interview, that means the method of uh, study, he teach the others, interview, search and uh, how you can produce data, how to collect the data, how to put together the, the data, and then mapping and to make it visuals. Because map, uh, today, when we say visualization, at that time map, and then he also produced a method also, his map and his calculation and all these things. So, in fact, it was a kind of workshop that he carried for uh, 15 years 
It was not alone one project. So sometimes when I am saying that these people are uh, pioneer, it's difficult for some people to understand. Normally they say it is started from the Italy. No problem. But suddenly it was not uh, at once in Italy. These pioneer of the pioneer of uh, Renaissance, in fact, they prepared the ground and they have prepared the background for the Renaissance and the Renaissance is, is in depth of Andalusian and also Sicilian, especially in three categories. That means the governance, good governance and tolerance. Second, the theological and rationalism and then in uh, experimental uh, science. They are in depth of these issues. And as we know, these three elements are the backbone of Renaissance. With this, I conclude. And sorry if I am finishing without uh, conclusion because I don't have time. Thank you so much.